name is Michael Scott. Um, I am the coordinator of the cochlear implant program here at Cincinnati Children's. I'm Lauren Dooley and I'm here because I'm profoundly deaf and I just want to talk about um, cochlear implants so that way maybe you'll feel more comfortable receiving when you get your implants. A cochlear implant is a surgically implanted device. Um, it has two parts, two components, one that's surgically implanted and then another that is worn externally. The two of them work together uh, to provide sound to those who have a severe to profound hearing loss and otherwise cannot have benefit or gain benefit from a hearing aid. I got diagnosed with my hearing loss when I was three years old and I wore hearing aids until I was about 12 and I um, began to lose the rest of my hearing and I didn't get any benefit from my hearing aids at all and I wanted to be able to communicate with my family since we're all hearing besides me and um, so I decided to get the cochlear implant and you have to like do a bunch of tests and you have to qualify in order to get the implant but I, and I qualified so I was able to receive that and I've had that for one for like five or six years and the other one for two or three years so a cochlear implant is used for a patient who uh, cannot get benefit from a hearing aid simply because their hearing loss is too great for a hearing aid to provide enough amplification. There are limitations to hearing aids that cochlear implants simply don't have because of the difference in the way that they provide stimulation. A hearing aid primarily uh, makes sounds louder. They take sound, process it, and make it louder so that the a uh, portion of the ear that is unable to make sounds loud enough for the brain to receive um, are able to hear those sounds. A cochlear implant bypasses a large portion of the auditory system, the portion that uh, is damaged or unable to deliver signal to the brain, um, and it does so electrically. Uh, so it functions much differently than a hearing aid, but provides the same benefits um, to, that a hearing aid do, um, but for those who have a severe to profound hearing loss. When I first got my implant, it sounded like a robot. Um, it was very weird. It was just like all one um, noise level, one frequency, and everyone sounded the same, and everything was just very like technological sounding. It was just really weird. But then once you're, because your brain has to make a new memory of that sound, so once you get used to that person's voice, then they sound much better than they did before. And I think with the cochlear implant, it's a lot louder and clearer because you can go and get your processors mapped to how you want them so you can hear certain sounds better than you could on a hearing aid. This is a cutaway of the hearing system, starting with your external ear. There's two components to a cochlear implant, one that looks a lot like a hearing aid and is actually worn on the ear just like a hearing aid. There's an internal component that's surgically implanted, and that's the part that you don't see, but does provide access through an electrical array that's implanted into the cochlea or the organ of hearing. Because the cochlear implant is able to bypass all of the middle ear space and a lot of the inner ear space, it's able to overcome the limitations that a hearing aid might have. The hearing aid is able to make sounds louder, um, but not always clearer. A cochlear implant is able to provide sound at a soft level um, with still that clarity. The two components, the internal device, which again you don't see um, because it's implanted underneath the skin, is about this large. There are several different types. This is just one example. The external device looks a lot like a hearing aid, but has an additional component that a hearing aid does not have. And it's through this that it communicates with the internal device by a magnet. So when worn, it would look a bit like this. When I was in sixth grade, I was doing very bad in my classes and everything, not because like I didn't understand the material, it was just very hard to hear um, the teachers and what they had to say. So once I got the code and plan and got used to it, I was able to hear things that I'd never heard before. And all kinds of things like, you know, the dogs, the toilet, water, all kinds of things I'd never had heard before. And so it was just interesting to be able to hear all those things. 
and to know what other people, you know, hear. And yeah, my hearing is not going to be like a normal person's hearing, but I still have some sense of that um, with the cochlear implants. Cochlear implant candidacy is limited to children who have a severe to profound hearing loss. There's a large collection of um, evaluations that uh, every child has to go through to determine candidacy. But basically, um, if a child has a severe to profound hearing loss and is not getting benefit from their hearing aids, from properly fit hearing aids, um, then they're considered uh, cochlear implant candidates. So once you got the cochlear implant, um, you wait about like a month or so, um, maybe it's like three weeks or four weeks or so, um, to let the um, stitches and the surgery and everything heal. And then you go and you get your processor turned on and they um, just do a bunch of like tests to get you started and so um, and give you like the sounds and the mapping and everything to get you started. And so that way once you're used to voices and everything you can go and tell them how you would want it adjusted and everything. While a cochlear implant uh, still does not provide normal hearing, um, it is able to provide access to sound in the mild hearing loss range which is of course a significant improvement over what might be a severe to profound hearing loss. Um, the advice I would give is to be, it's a hard road um, at first. Like I remember when I first got my implant, I absolutely did not like it. And I was like, what on earth did I do to myself? But after like I went through the process and got it, and I'm extremely thankful for it because it's nice to be able to, to hear and everything. And I'm one of those people that I like to hear everything and not just part of things. And it's just nice to be able to have somewhat sense of normal in the hearing world because we'll never be in both worlds, but it's nice to have a little bit of that pathway into the hearing world. And so I would just tell them that it is hard at first, but just persevere and it will be good in the end.